You know what? Some of these masajids and these organizations that I personally went and visited, the minute you go in, they'll condition you not to talk about this, not to talk about this. And what do you end up talking about? Only things that if you speak about a lecture, if you give, that even a farafid is in your crowd and he's in your lecture and he's listening to you, uh, he wouldn't even feel like uh, you're, you're attacking him or he'll feel happy in being in your gathering. Sah? A Shi'i Rafid will be sitting there and just smiling in your face and say, wow. Things that will bring every single body, whichever group they are, to sit under you and leave and walk away. Walk away and have no feeling in his heart that you in any way, form or shape has corrected his belief. Is that, the, is that how the Prophet's gathering was? Yeah, the Prophet, whenever he found a mistake within the midst of his companions, he would stand and he would say, فَمَا بَالُوا أَقْوَامُ what, what is the statement of the people who said, أَصُومُوا وَلَا أُفْتِرْ وَأَقُومُوا اللَّيْلِ وَلَا أَنَامُ وَلَا أَتَزَوَّجُوا النِّسَاء فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ بِنِّي that what's the situation of a people who said all night I will pray, all day I will fast, and at night I will, uh, I will never get married in my entire life. Then the Prophet said, every time a mistake occurred, he will stop it and he will correct it. He will take the, he will, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, take the best of ways of correcting it. Sometimes he would name them, name them. sometimes he would what? Sometimes he wouldn't name them, sometimes he would make it ambiguous in general. But did he ever leave off correcting mistakes? People are confusing two, each, two things with each other. Now we agree with you the manner in which things need to be corrected have to be observed. And the etiquette that a person corrects a mistake. That doesn't mean you withhold the truth though. You still have to correct. You still have to tell the truth. Sometimes the maslaha and the benefit is connected to what? You say in the person's name as the Prophet did. What did he say? Kadab Abu Salabil. Abu Salabil lied. The Prophet said this alayhi salatu he named him. And sometimes he would say, فَمَا بَالُ أَقْوَامُ What's the situation of the people? So whatever the maslah and the benefit brings about, you do. But the Prophet always clarified the truth. He will always say what was right and what was wrong. We're cursed, ya ikhwa. We as a nation are cursed. If we, if we withhold the truth and we're silent about it, knowing that the people are doing wrong, and then so you're telling me to come into the masjid and to hide the truth, knowing what the truth is. They knew the truth. They knew what this person was upon was wrong. They would conceal it. They would conceal it. Rather, some of these individuals even boast by saying, in my crowd are all of the different groups. And alhamdulillah, they will listen to me. I remember one time when it really hurt me was a dear Bundy was coming to, my, to, to a lecture of mine for nearly two years. He said, Akhi, I liked your lessons, man. He said, Alhamdulillah, I'm a dear Bundy and you really touched me. Mushkila. That, for me, it was worrying now. For two years you were coming. He said, yeah, why? I never felt like you ever alienized me. I didn't feel like you. In my heart, I'm like, but I never created your belief. I have deceived you. I have personally deceived you if I've only told you what you already believed. The job of a da'i is to correct the problems in the community, not to tell the people what they already know. If a sick patient comes to you, you and they've got stomach problem, you don't tell them that their hair is silk and mashallah you've got nice hair, and whoa, your nails are good as well, Allahu Akbar, your eyesight, Allahu Akbar, mashallah you've got chubby cheeks. You don't talk to them about those things when they are having a stomach problem. You go directly to the problem of that patient and you tell them your stomach problem, okay, this is what it is. And the alim and the person of knowledge, his job is what? To cure the problems. His job is to go directly to the problems of the community and to correct it and to change it and to rectify it. Wallahi, this is important. But, إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبَصَارَ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ it's not the eyes that become blind, brothers and sisters, it's the hearts. The person who may not see all of that. Huh? The poet he said, لَقَدْ أَسْمَعْتْ نَادَيْتَ حَيًّا وَلَكِنْ لَا حَيَاتَ لِمَنْ تُنَادِي وَلَوْ أَنْفَقْتُ فِي النَّارِ أَضَاءَتْ وَلَكِنَّكَ تَنْفُقُ فِي الرَّمَادِي 
I have made those who I've pointed out, I've made it clear to them this particular issue. If they are alive though. If they are alive and they have hearts, then truly I have mentioned to them that this is the problem. And our problem, as much as it is the community's issues, huh? our problem, one of the greatest portion of it is the dua who've deceived the people. I ask you guys a sincere question. If a person is taking a road, and this is the road to their destination, if somebody says to them, Akhi, this is not the right road, go that way, and inshallah ta'ala you will make it. Let's just say you follow that person's command and you went a different direction and you ended up finding out that this individual diverted you from the, the path that you were on and that was the destination to has he deceived you or not has he not huh? has he not deceived you yes or no the du'at are like that to the people today <coughs> many of them the cure and the people's solutions is right in front of the people and some people are walking them to the solution and they're saying it's there and guess what they come and they divert them from that path and they tell them to go what this direction go there go there so they are a problem from the problems that the community are safe suffering from many of these du'at i remember i went to a, uh, i went to a university recently i had a lecture and when i finished i mentioned how tawheed affects everything about our lives yusuf alayhi salatu was salam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that he saved him from the woman, what did Allah say? Innahu min ibadina al That he was a person upon tawheed, mukhlas. So say tawheed. He got saved from zina because he was a muwahid. Because of his tawheed and his sincerity, his ikhlas. Yusuf. So I was trying to draw that point that the underlying point for all of our solution is to really go back to what la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah means as Muslims and to learn its meaning. This will change everything for us. And I said, brothers, how many things do we do in our lives if we just came with the intention we get rewarded for it? I gave an example. I said, for instance, you're in your class and a Muslim brother asks you for a pen in the class, in university, you're studying, and you have an intention that you're giving this pen to your brother from the angle of what? إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةِ That the believers are brothers to one another. You're doing this because of the rules and the regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love your brother, to be kind to your brother, to love for him what you love for yourself. How much reward can we get from it? Everything around us goes back to our what? Our ikhlas and our sincerity and our intention. After I finished my lecture, a brother came up to me and he said to me, recently one of the uh, du'ats came to this university and what did he say? Huh? That intention, huh? intention for everything can't be really achieved and it's something i've heard before not something new to me really giving a pen to somebody you're going to find intention from that yeah instead of pushing the people to sincerity and ikhlas you're pushing them away from it you are a part of a problem what are you achieving from saying that statement so you have to realize that this is what we're suffering from may allah unite the people upon the truth and there's nothing more happier and more joyful for a person of the Sunnah to see the people unite upon the Sunnah. Wallahi, there isn't. And it brings joy and happiness to the people, a person of the Sunnah, to see the people unite upon the Sunnah.